Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome star of the small screen and some shit films, it's Mr. Johnny Vegas! <laughs> We obviously couldn't afford Viva Las Vegas. <laughs> so the show started like a fucking bad 70s cop show. <laughs> I'm drunk. I begged you to get drunk. You haven't. <laughs> so I got drunk and hid inside myself. <laughs> knowing that you'd be polite, sitting there going, mmm, the soup was good. Fuck the soup. <laughs> Who had soup? Me! <laughs> Who had a meal? Fuck the soup. <laughs> I'm Johnny Vegas. <laughs> and the fun stops now. <laughs> so I'm not a comedian. I'm an entertainer. <laughs> you should know now, that's what I do. We create a lovely warm feeling, and then I walk out and ruin it and you would take a really shit picture <laughs> of a mic stand. <laughs> because you went digital, didn't you? Yeah, if it was Animex, you'd have got it. <laughs> you still had it. I want my own TV show. You want your own TV show? Well, the way to start is by intimidating people who are on TV. Because <laughs> that way, they really want to be your friend. Keep filming. Yeah, you'll have your own fucking six-second pirate DVD. <laughs> and then they'll find you dead in the skip. <laughs> Can we dim the lights? <laughs> Can we try dimming <laughs> the lights? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Spanish fucking dimmer switch, off and on. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks! Cos that has made the world a difference! <laughs> As I was saying, I am Johnny Vegas. Yeah. And I don't say... Do you know what it's like when this happens? Do you know what it's like when that happens? <laughs> Cos you've no idea what it's like to be me. <laughs> you've never been kicked out the house, love! For saying, Dad, <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be a potter. <laughs> and that's not a joke, darling. <laughs> I love pottery. <laughs> Teapots was my life. I lived for clay, it got me out of bed in the morning. <laughs> so arrogant cows like you treated me like that. Four years at college, I did study in pottery. <laughs> and do you know what I got for it? <laughs> Lewis Green in the crew. <laughs> Rang home, told me, Dad, I got the Lewis Green. I feel like I've let you down. Aww. Dad said, you've not let me down, son. I never thought you'd pass. <laughs> Wouldn't even talk to me. Mum and Dad, both big drinkers. My mum, habitual gambler. Also illiterate. She played the scratch cards. <laughs> she got in bed embarrassed going into the bookies and just colouring the shade of the horse that she wanted to bet on. <laughs> I remember at school, I made her a scratch card. You know, you do them pictures in coloured pencil, you go over them with crayon, you scratch them off for bummy night. I did her three happy faces, and I got the teacher to write in one million pounds. <laughs> she loved it. She scratched it off, she gave me a big hug, it went straight on the fridge. 
Then she realised I didn't have the money to pay her. <laughs> she went fucking berserk. <laughs> she threatened to report me to gambling commission. <laughs> and eventually she calmed down. She just took me bike and all my toys to cash converters. <laughs> Said I could owe the rest. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to always have that feeling of being a sense of failure? You shut up. <laughs> Do you know what it's like when your dad cuts your pictures out the family photos and sticks them on the empty milk bottles? <laughs> That's when you suspect that you weren't sired by him. He told me they were vouchers for me, ma'am. Said they were saving up for that dirty slag tattoo she always wanted. <laughs> Said it was a surprise, so he did it in her sleep with a compass and a fucking big pen. <laughs> she went berserk. I played out a lot as a kid. Fended for myself, latchkey kid. Oh yeah, you know the type. Thank God there's one neighbor with Alzheimer's. Always good for penny for the guy. <laughs> Every night of the year. <laughs> Sometimes twice. <laughs> I don't know if she was terrified, but she was good. She kept me in chips and cornet all that dear scared old bitch. <laughs> but I was ignored. I wasn't wanted until we went to Butlins. <laughs> My mum loved it every night, a box of wine. She'd sit there, play bingo, hook and inflate it and fall asleep afterwards. <laughs> My dad, he'd just go mind sweeping at big ballroom. And then siphon petrol out the go-karts. <laughs> I don't know why, cos we caught the train. <laughs> Me, I loved it. I had a romper suit, a set of keys of my own. And then I won a talent contest. Little lad walking up there, Ali Jones was very trendy. Me in a romper suit. I realised I had a voice that was a gift straight from the angels. I got up singing, walking in the earth. And I won. I'm on a free weekend on Barry Island. <laughs> and a meat hamper so big. Paul McCartney's ex-wife, not ex, he buried her. <laughs> I've got to get that right in my head. His old missus, she'd have fucking as a vegetarian got so angry she'd have shit turnips for the month. <laughs> It had sausages, chops and everything. And for the first time in my life, my mum took an interest in me. She entered me in every competition going. But being a gambler, she was highly superstitious, so I had to keep wearing the romper suit. <laughs> I won everything, but I was nine. <laughs> I got my first year of female attention. Still do. No, you want me, love. Your eyes are sending a fax to me testicles. <laughs> What's up with you? Why cowered away? Are you within? Seriously? <laughs> You've booked her for the full night. <laughs> If it's back there, I'm seeing the crowd I normally play to. Down here, I'm seeing blokes trying to impress hookers. <laughs> Are you married? Yeah. Genuinely. All right, hook you now. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. You look... I know. You have, I've got the message. All right, step back. I just took a look at her, fancied me chances, and thought you brought your, you know, your niece out for the evening, like... <laughs> pretty woman. Something like that. I can't help myself, you know. Love's a lawnmower. I can't afford my own. I borrow the neighbours. <laughs> Should take it as a compliment. She's gorgeous. <laughs> She's just too young for you. <laughs> Don't even... All I'm saying is I 
have been good with women from an early age. I was born to be on the stage, although most of you are doubting it right now. <laughs> Problem is, like I say, I'm doing gigs in a romper suit. And I turned up at a grand final in Skegness the night that my voice breaks. <laughs> I'm in a suit that can't fit anything more in it. <laughs> and as I walk on stage that night, my balls choose to drop. <laughs> my balls drop. There's no room for them to go. <laughs> it rips from there to there. <laughs> I end up looking like a split case. <laughs> I'm booed off the stage. I'm booed out of there. Oh, I don't want your sympathy, just your understanding. <laughs> My man lost all interest in me. And I started to comfort it. <laughs> I did warn you with the no gags, didn't I? <laughs> Do you know what it's like when your man picks you up from school and tells you the kids she's not related to you? <laughs> she's your social worker. <laughs> She started sewing false names into my gym kit <laughs> and my school blazer. Except for the fact she couldn't write and she couldn't sew. So she cut things out of boxes and just glued them in. <laughs> my school report for PE, Mr Kipling. <laughs> For sport. In fact, the constant need for medical attention is a hindrance to the class. Domestic science, he does not bake exceedingly good fucking cakes. All of you. All he does is consume them at an alarming rate. gym teacher used to fake notes off my mum just to stop me taking part in the class. <laughs> oh, you there, you there, um, um, Aunt Bessie. <laughs> Over here, apparently your sports bra is in the wash. <laughs> and therefore you will not be taking part in the lesson. I tried to point out that it was on school fucking headed notepaper. <laughs> he accused me of being on my period. <laughs> I went to an old boys school. <laughs> I couldn't do gym, I carried on eating. I reached a point where my uniform wouldn't fit. You know what it's like when you're buying your school uniform from age concern? <laughs> That's why nobody can pick me out on the school photo. <laughs> I'm the fucker at the back of the three-piece tweed suit. <laughs> with the monocle. <laughs> you lot, you had school, you had dead good nicknames at school, didn't you? Wanker. <laughs> Sky at night. <laughs> the only advantage I had, you know what it rained? I could sit in staff room. <laughs> Nobody blinked an eyelid. <laughs> By 50, I had my own cup, <laughs> my own pigeonhole. <laughs> you lot, you graduated from school. Technically, I retired. <laughs> I got my own clock. <laughs> Dear Mr. Dolmio, <laughs> thank you for all your years of kind service. From all the staff and the pupils. I ran all the way home to show me mum. It's the first thing I've won since Gagness. 
When I got home, she packed her bags. She'd gone. Didn't leave a note, obviously. She left one of them flick books. It were, it were a picture of a, a stick woman giving birth to a pig. <laughs> and then crying her eyes out. <laughs> and then the pig had a monocle. <laughs> and then she started pushing Dad away. <laughs> and then it was three treasure chests and uh, just a picture of her in a taxi waving. <laughs> Thing is, she couldn't fucking count either. <laughs> She'd only won a tenner. <laughs> she only got to Wigan. <laughs> when apparently she was considered quite the intellectual. <laughs> and a bit of a catch because there was no web in between her fingers and her toes. <laughs> she could have had a pick of men, but she carried on drinking. She ended up with one of them, you know them street performers? Well, cos he paid himself in silver and stand there doing nothing and want to be paid for it. <laughs> He'd come home every night and she'd sit there pissed with a 50 pence coin waiting to scrape him down. <laughs> Apparently he had loads of tattoos underneath. She thought it was a big fucking scratch card. <laughs> what did I do? I ended up here. <laughs> hey! <laughs> what? Okay. 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 Hey, hey, where's your monkey? He's fucking off his tits on Lino Concentrate. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know, he didn't know. It was double the dose. He, he, he was found in fucking Toys R Us. Shagging that one from the Midnight Garden. <laughs> He's now in rehab. He's begging me to smuggle him stuff in. I took him some vanish, but Robbie Williams robbed it. <laughs> Asshole tea bags, what do you sell? <laughs> you sell what? Washing machines. Washing machines? Yeah. <laughs> and yet you're looking down on tea bags. <laughs> what kind of washing machines? Hoover, on point. No Bosch? No. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do you sell the ones that open right to left or left to right? Cos I know that the ones that open left to right are built in Spain and they're shit. <laughs> Look at them, a new couple, they come walking in the shop. They want a boss that will run for ten years. <laughs> and you sell them a Spanish one so she can get her hair done. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Benidorm, what a town. <laughs> Who came in on Ray and Earth? Everybody else too ashamed to admit it. <laughs> Who tried to do the priority boarding? <laughs> priority boarding? There's more fuckers than the rest of them. <laughs> There's 62 of you going, punch me in the face, but don't hurt my laptop. <laughs> You're together. Look at you, well, it looks at you as if I was going to single you out with three lesbians. <laughs> Come on, take a big sigh of relief, even though you've always fancied your mates, haven't you? <laughs> There's always been something about her. Don't look down at your knees. <laughs> you've always liked her, haven't you? You've always quietly liked her. I'm as straight as they come. I know you're as straight as they come. I'm talking about fantasies, and fantasies are very different. <laughs> You've always had feelings for your friend, just admit it quick, because we've got a show to do. <laughs> do you have feelings for your friend? OK, Johnny, I've got feelings for my friend. Don't say OK, Johnny, like you've gone into a fucking regional radio station. <laughs> do you have feelings for your friend? Yes. 
How long have you had them? About five months. Five months? What, was she dead fat? <laughs> She's had feelings for you for five months. How long have you known that she just wants to fucking kiss, kiss your breasts? Five months. Five months? What, you came away when she did? You must feel really awkward on night town. <laughs> How long have you known that these two want to cop off and you just want no to fucking do with it? Five, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is Mum! Hey! Already! It's not the show I was fucking planning. <laughs> but already we've found that the lesbian gestation period is five months. <laughs> what everyone get? Don't worry, mate, I'm coming to you, you... If you do private booking, what's the point of booking the seat for yourself? When I know someone like you is going to sit down. You can't see him at the back. One of his eyes is false. <laughs> and it's not a human eye. <laughs> that cheap bastard has gone to a local museum and nicked one off a fox. <laughs> I've got a man with one real eye, one false eye, going, hey, sat on your own, do you mind if we join you? Yeah? <laughs> My wife's a nervous flyer. And all the time, your glass eye is falling asleep. I have to keep pushing it back. <laughs> and she's licking a big piece of ham, going, it's the only thing that calms me down. It's the only thing that calms me down when I fly, licking ham. I've tried gammon, but it's not the same, it's too salty. I end up going berserk and threatening the staff. <laughs> but you know, you get the cheap flights, and you get the erdostesses that were once unavailable to the likes of you and me. <laughs> First flight I got on, you go, God, you're gorgeous. You like my mum before she started drinking cider. <laughs> they were beautiful, they were, they were untouchable. <laughs> they were just at that point of going, I love you and I want you, but I know I can never have you. <laughs> they were part of your wank bank. <laughs> Why can't I be part of your world? But thanks to Ryan, her, they are part of your world. <laughs> I'm opening a, a world of torment here. <laughs> no, I'm even going to ask you. Mate, a man who takes a shovel and a lantern on a date. <laughs> your idea of playing hard to get is a padlock on the cemetery gate. <laughs> Why are you fastening your pocket? What you keep in there? It's not your money. It's not your money, is it? It's your guilt. <laughs> <laughs> Who's in your wank bank? <laughs> Who? What? What? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm obviously desperately in love with the woman I'm with. You fucking give it away now. <laughs> You messed up royally when you acted like you didn't know what I was on about. If you had wings, I could have left you alone. <laughs> Too late for that. Who's in your wank bank? Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow? No. Oh, oh no, Cheryl Cole. Like you've made a huge mistake. You are sort of opposite your wife. <laughs> Who the fuck is Cheryl Cole? She's the bird from Girls Aloud, isn't she? The bird? The bird? <laughs> That's how we think about women. I like Cheryl Cole as well, yeah. <laughs> Not really a wank bank then, is it? <laughs> you like her, she likes her. It's more of a race to the finish. <laughs> Who can get her back to the semi-detached first? <laughs> a wank bank's about denial. <laughs> it's not about sharing it. She's your wife. She's petty cash. <laughs> Fuck off. You do. You... When you've been with someone long enough, you dip into it when you need it. 
You're like a bank holiday. <laughs> you freak, she seemed like a healthy couple. I don't <laughs> need you on a night like this. <laughs> Who's got a better wang bang than that? Who was it that was never available for you? <laughs> Who's in your wang bang? <laughs> Can I go away? Can he go away? Yeah, it's called a divorce. Yeah, well, I'm not here to do that, mate. What, are you two on a... You two are on a fucking illicit night out! And a DVD recording! <laughs> and you're asking me, can I go away? Oh, this is brilliant! Mate, you're in the clear! If we were sensitive, now, we'd walk away and, and leave them to themselves, but it, it actually appears that, um He's nobbing his secretary. <laughs> and he's turned up and decided to use the show as a nice place to bring you to, to show her that he doesn't mind forking out 20 euros <laughs> to get his leg over. And quite frankly, I'm ashamed. <laughs> so where'd you work together? Because let's be honest, we're gonna fucking use this stuff. <laughs> we might as well now go through the whole thing. This would be really good for the promotion of the DVD. No, she knows now. You what? If me mum doesn't know that we're together, she knows now. <laughs> I was more concerned about his wife. <laughs> Walking, hell, it's Jerry Springer through and through, isn't it? For the rest of the show, just stay on them two. <laughs> Cos if the DVD doesn't sell, at least we've got some fucking blackmail material. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> and you treat it like we've been hanging out for ages. Adios. Look, you can't. Just what? I would not go to Bendy on Palace with trousers like that. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, if I was you, I'd just take a really bad fucking attitude. <laughs> Self-conscious? I'm pulling my pants up. <laughs> Does that make you comfortable? Are you happy with that? <laughs> I don't look like I'm in a nursing home <laughs> and a very cheap nursing home where they just sell a tape of sponge to a rat and put it under your bed. <laughs> That's your bed bath, Mr. Vegas. <laughs> Simon Cowell. You know, mate, this is beyond Simon Cowell. <laughs> he would have left some room. <laughs> You're over there. Well, what are you waiting for? A fucking life raft. <laughs> You're over there. OK, I'll send help. <laughs> I'll get it to you the minute I remove my testicles from my ass. Your head looks like a light piano fell on it. <laughs> and your teeth, when you push it forward like that, you look like an albino lawnmower. <laughs> it's like curing the community, isn't it? They take them on holiday, they bring them to a show, and then they fuck off the bogs and leave me to cope with them. <laughs> Fuck it hell, it's like the lost world, isn't it? He's got a of what? He's got a tattoo of eyes on his bum. <laughs> hey, I've got a cyclops. <laughs> they're not jumping me kicks to show people. Why did you put eyes on your ass? I fucking don't know why I'm asking. <laughs> why not? I don't want to see it, do you understand? <laughs> don't tell me what I want to see. <laughs> I see Sticky Vicky. Don't tell me, yeah. What does Sticky Vicky do? Sharpens a pencil. How? There. Pointing's not enough. <laughs> How does she sharpen a pencil? She's got a sharp upper fanny. She's got a sharpener upper fanny. <laughs> There's a woman in Penadon who sharpens a pencil <laughs> on a fanny. And yet, bingo is illegal. <laughs> you figure that out! You figure that out! She can sharpen a pencil.
pencil in a vagina. But if you're waiting on a full house and the police turn up, you go, I never wanted that ceramic cheater. <laughs> Just that casual. And the bloke shoves the ball up his ass going, What are you doing? It's just a private sex party. <laughs> Officially, she is a sexy magic show. <laughs> exactly. No. One woman there going, I've never let him in. I'm not fucking putting flowers up there. <laughs> a sexy magic show. It can't be magic. <laughs> the idea of magic is you don't know where it came from. <laughs> And you don't know where it's gone. That's why. That's why she doesn't do kids parties. Because kids are very honest. If she tried that shit in front of kids, they'd all be going, "It's in your front bum." <laughs> it's in your front bum. You know them fucking precocious kids. The ones that come up to you when you're in a family do. They walk up and they go, why do you smell of piss and pies? <laughs> when a woman pulls a light bulb out of her fanny, <laughs> that is not magic. That is just what the Green Party have been looking for for years. <laughs> Vagina. Right. I love sex. <laughs> Fucking believe me. Ring me. <laughs> I like sex. I like foreplay. I've watched Sticky Vicky. I do not want to do foreplay. That feels like I'm cleaning out my fucking garage. <laughs> Two hours, you're still pulling stuff out, going, fucking hell. <laughs> what happened to spontaneous sex? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's make two piles. <laughs> stuff that's going to the jumble sale. <laughs> and stuff that can go back in. <laughs> After we've had sex. Because, darling, I can't come if I can feel a chessboard banging against it. <laughs> and what if she was magic? What if you put it in there? What if you entered the sticky domain that belongs to Vicky? <laughs> she was laid down before me, possibly sleeping, because she is 71. <laughs> And I managed to get aroused. <laughs> and to be honest, life would have to have taken a turn for the worst. <laughs> if I had a third ready, and I put myself inside her, <laughs> and then it came out of my ear <laughs> with a playing card. The nine of spades. And she woke up and went, is that the card you was thinking of? <laughs> I'm, mate, I, I love your fashion ideas, but I'm going to have to pull these down because I'm losing the feeling in my left leg. Your testicles going, yours are free, now three hours. <laughs> I love you too. And apart from my kid being born, this is the greatest night in the history of my life. <laughs> Shit, that's Rocky too. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you reckon when Vicky's on stage and she's pulling things out and we've established this, a vagina is not magic. But when she's pulling things out, 
Do you reckon an ass ever gets a bit jealous <laughs> of all the attention and tries to squeeze out a little bit of shit? Cos you've seen the performance, she always looks uncomfortable going... Do you think that's a bum vying for attention? Going, hey, hey, see what I you, look at this! And your sculptures. <laughs> She's in court fighting over the fact that a younger lass stole her name. <laughs> Who got on jury service for that one? <laughs> Two women arguing over whose fucking vagina is called sticky. <laughs> the surprise witness was a tampax. <laughs> She's in court. She technically lost. Right, she now... No, she can't call herself Sticky Vicky. What? Are you the young Sticky Vicky? Seriously? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's decide tonight. Apparently, and I don't believe her, we've got the young Sticky Vicky in. <laughs> Who would like to see a hide of glass? No, it takes a lot of fucking cheer from that. Who wants to see this fast as a man? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, <laughs> <laughs> I implore you, this is not Sticky Vicky. This is a younger lady. Hey, I need to go to a party with you and have the other one turn up. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Don't look now. What? Don't look now. What? She's got the same funny as me. <laughs> if she's got a bunch of flowers and some fucking Asbus Bramante up there, we are leaving. We're leaving, John, are we? Are you really the young Sticky Vicky? Yeah. Could you hide that? Yeah. I swear on my life, this is not a plan. I didn't know she was in the room. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. And I don't believe it. Hey! Official bottle out. <laughs> well, come on. Well, I've been into town, I've seen the sex act. I watched Batman. <laughs> the sex show. <laughs> a bloke with wings. A pearl of Doc Martins and an idol. <laughs> and they didn't play the original Batman music, they played the Prince one and he was trying to keep hard. And he had to come across the stage going, and where, and where, and where is the Batman? And at this point, I was just pissing myself laughing. <laughs> then they brought a lass out on the bed that was moving round. And his only job, his only job was to put his penis in the mouth and follow the bed round. Yeah, because that's how you fight crime. <laughs> but this poor bastard looked like he'd stepped in for the mate, going, yeah, I'll do it for the night, it's no but I'll do it. And he couldn't keep it in the mouth. So he kept running ahead, waiting for her. It was like hook a duck. <laughs> it was the unsexiest thing I've ever seen. And then another pretender to the throne, another so-called Sticky Vicky, came out and she couldn't find the start of the flags. <laughs> so as she revolved, she stopped the bed. And from behind, it looked like somebody rummaging through the handbag. <laughs> She's there going, I fucking know I left it here somewhere. Jesus, I didn't leave 49 flags and a piece of string at Kev's house did I? <laughs> and when she eventually found it, she genuinely went... <laughs> da, 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 da. You know what I mean? At last I can have a geography lesson and a wank. <laughs> I've got to admit, it goes to a pub in Manchester where there's ladies... They're of a certain age, they like bus passes and bongella and they fucking... <laughs> For a couple of bottles of barley wine <laughs> and a fiver top up on their electric card, 
they'll come back to your gaff and do whatever you fucking want. And this lad, God bless him. Hello. <laughs> What's he doing now? I'm saying he's dead. He's fucking dead. What do you think when somebody does that and looks up to the skies? He's gone missing. In the middle of a show, I'm going to start a desperate search for me, mate. I wonder where he could be, north, south, east or west. I'll start. I bet you don't get invited to many funerals, do you? <laughs> eh? The priest is doing the eulogy and you run back in going, I found a fucking clue! <laughs> There's a big stone outside with the name on it! <laughs> He's dead! He's gone! But before he died, he went to this pub and he booked two pensioners to come back to his for some... Nan on nan action. <laughs> and he texts him back and he's telling us, right, that they went back to ways and they, they, they started to get undressed really fucking slowly. Because <laughs> the pensioners, they're like phyllo pastry, aren't they? <laughs> and they like to fold everything. And he said, when you're naked, get freaky together. <laughs> and as he's leaving the room, one of them goes, have you got any butter? <laughs> have you got any butter? Because Maud's a bit dry. <laughs> he goes into the kitchen going, butter? <laughs> Him butter! Butter! He comes out of the kitchen with a tub of stalk, <laughs> slams it on the table and goes, I'm on the door, love! You can have fucking margarine like everyone else! <laughs> I've not been able to watch my nan bake <laughs> since he told me that, and I'm not a prude. I came here tonight for one reason, one honest to goodness reason. To see your ass. Investments. An ostrich farm. It was fucking turkeys on stilts. <laughs> A bucket and spade emporium in Benidorm. <laughs> they banned buckets and spades. You're not allowed buckets and spades on the beach. You are. You are. <laughs> Why are you outraged? You're fucking 39. <laughs> Has that ruined your holiday now? John Leslie, the musical. <laughs> but I, that one's panning. Do you think I fucking cared about what was panning? <laughs> the moment I stepped on this stage, I knew my fucking time in showbiz was over. <laughs> My three rides in Noel Edmonds' fucking helicopter were gone. <laughs> Cosmic fucking ordering. Have you known about that? <laughs> right what you want on a piece of paper and put it up the chimney. Yeah, Noel, it works really good around Christmas. <laughs> if you're seven and you want a fucking bike. <laughs> I'm skint! Accept it! I took the money and fucking blew it. <laughs> 
blew it. I love lap dancers. You'd pay me to watch you. I even went to a local lap dancing club. God forgive me. St. Helens, Lapalicious. <laughs> Looking up on the net. Lapalicious. It was amazing. No need for champagne. Pomade. Pomade. Now everybody knows you don't buy pomade for professional dancers. <laughs> do you? Pomade, as Oz Clark said to me, he sat me down one day and he went, Johnny, pomade does not go with red meat. It does not go with white meat. It does not go with chicken, fish, fowl. It's not a dessert wine. Pomade is strictly for prizes in Tombola. And he's only meant to be drunk by young lasses who want to get leathered and fingered by a rough lad. <laughs> Walking home across the... Why do you put your fucking hand up there, mate? <laughs> Are you young? Are you a rough lad? Yeah. Is that what you do? Your finger lasses on for me? <laughs> right, what was it like? <laughs> what was it like? Because I've got... Hey, I know we've all got homes to go to, but come on. <laughs> I've got one question to ask. When you've done that dreadful thing, yeah. have you took your finger and presented it to your friend? Yes. <laughs> of course I have. You'll never get shagged again. <laughs> hang on, hang on here. No, hang on, hang on. Where's your parents? <laughs> you fucking... <laughs> You're sat there going, that's my boy. <laughs> Don't raise him to respect women and the fundamental, you know, issues of lovemaking. Not you, love. No, you're an innocent. Look, he's been fingering you for years. <laughs> what time is it? Because I'm guessing we're running a bit late. Oh, God, if I could just get this belt over my neck. <laughs> Where's the gentleman? <laughs> what? <laughs> you actually asked that like you'd walk up and just go, what's the answer, what's the answer? <laughs> you must have had a really shit time at school. <laughs> you there, Jenkins! Sausages. <laughs> Did you base your exams on what was for lunch? <laughs> a train is travelling at two miles an hour. It leaves London and is due to arrive in Glasgow Four hours later, but the headwind is nine miles an hour. What's the answer? Ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Ham sandwich? Oh, fuck is... Oh, no, I should have got my chips. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what I would like to do now is introduce you to something. You made me believe! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the wheel! Oh, it's not a giant monkey. It's a pottery wheel. It was going to be the big end to the show. Everyone was going to go wild going, oh, I've not seen him doing pottery for years. And then they said, well, you can't bring it down on the glass lift because we've got to bolt it down. And you're going, well, I can't do it back there because people won't be amazed. But now, <laughs> now I feel like I've just unclothed my mum getting out of the shower. <laughs> hey, hey! <laughs> Don't listen to them, do it to me, do it to me, do it to me, do it to me, do good, do good. Come on, come on, look at me. Have I ever, ever, ever lied to you? Ladies and gentlemen. I lost my money and I'd moved back in with my dad. I thought, isn't it funny how fortunes change? One minute you sat swapping fucking Erlach and Moose combinations with Peter Stringfellow. 
whilst champagne drips off a naked leg into your crystal tankard. The next thing, you sat in your dad's caravan, <laughs> styling your hair with Mr. Mash, <laughs> and licking the vodka sweat off his forehead. <laughs> and as I rolled my dad over, and pushed up the colour gas heater. He loves it, he thinks he's a sunbed. <laughs> I pulled up his shirt. I helped myself to that little pool, that rich reservoir of salty absolute at the base of his spine. <laughs> and as I was licking it off his back, He let out a little fart. <laughs> and I thought, there's got to be a better way than this. <laughs> That's when I wandered through the streets, found a night class, found some old women making miniature versions of their houses, like the Land of Giants, and fucking headstones for dead pets. And that's where I came across the wheel. This thing is the only thing that's ever been good to me. Not you and your offers of sex when he eventually leaves. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Should we do something beautiful? Should we do something beautiful? Hey! Fancy! Some pottery. Yeah. I fancy making something. Would you like that? Let me finish it. Come on, you brassy bitch! Come and make it bigger! Get up here now! Quick, I wish it was you, cos she scares the fuck out of me. Hiya! Get out! Jesus Christ. I don't think you need me. <laughs> Look at lap dancing in ceramics, finally me too. <laughs> I'm gonna entertain them, baby. Do, do the same rules apply? If they touch you, they get their fingers broke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, come on, it's not been a normal show. <laughs> I want more than a drink, I want some fucking tetanus. <laughs> from over there, you've got tiny fucking hands, haven't you? I thought you'd buy us a pipe, you cheap bastard. It got smaller as I came back here. Do you know what we're doing from here on in? Yeah. No, it doesn't involve the normal stuff. <laughs> we're gonna get mucky. Put this on and put it on nicely. I like a lady, you're doing pottery now. 
You're not wanking off an Adam. <laughs> Have you got any jewellery worth any? No. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Our gosh bling is fine. <laughs> no, come on. We can right, do this. Right. It's meant to be sexy. Your arms aren't quite long enough, are they? <laughs> I'm not used to doing someone from the front whilst I'm round the back. Do you want me to turn round? No, because then I can see your face. <laughs> I'd much prefer to think of you as a rescue dog. <laughs> it's slow, 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 slow. Oh, 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 oh. Slow it down, love, will you? Slow it down! Before. <laughs> right, leave it at that. I'm going to make a handle and it's very sexy. <laughs> okay. Do you know how to do it? Oh, do I? Do I ever? Oh, no, I don't know. It looks like it's got gonorrhea. Please, man. 